So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand and I welcome you to this series called RBI 24/7. So guys, as most of you would be knowing that in this series we discuss a set of five questions which belong to finance and economics current affairs and they can be of use to you if you are preparing for competitive exams, right? So do watch this video till the end and I hope this is going to benefit you. And before moving ahead to the session I would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel. So if you are a new entrant here, do not forget to subscribe to us and do not forget to press this bell icon which is flashing on the screen because it can help you to get notified whenever any new video comes up. You can also join our telegram group. On this group, you can post all your doubts and queries and we are going to get back to you as soon as possible. So are you ready for question number one? Here is your question number one. I hope the screen is perfectly visible. And this question, it talks about liquidity trap. So following are some details about liquidity trap, which are the correct ones, right? So three statements given to you, moving straight away to the solution. And the solution is option B. Option B means only two. That means this is a correct statement, whereas one and three, they are not correct. Right. So, uh, before talking about these statements, let us first know that what is the meaning of liquidity trap. So, I think the name gives you some hint that it is a trap in which liquidity is also involved. So, guys, see, liquidity trap is a situation when the interest rates in country are super low, right? So, this is the most important factor here or a most important feature to identify a situation of liquidity trap that the interest rates, they are going to be at very, very low levels, right? And these interest rates, so I think most of us know that why do governments, uh, why do uh, central banks, why does a central bank cut interest rate? Because it wants the cost of borrowing to go down and it wants to stimulate the economy, right? So these steps are usually taken when there are uh, recessionary tendencies in market, right? So when a central bank has lowered the interest rate to a certain extent or to such a low level that it cannot go beyond that, right? So it is already at a very low rate and it is it and it is not seem to working, right? So government has been cutting rates, but that is not showing the effect in the economy, which can be due to many factors, right? So in that case, the government is said to have been in, the economy is said to have been in a liquidity trap, right? So here you can see this picture tells you, so central bank pumping money, borrowing does not increase. So by cutting the interest rate, the central bank is trying to uh, push the lending activity, pu uh, try, trying to persuade the borrowers to buy, uh, sorry, to borrow so that they stimulate demand, but they are not doing so. So what can be the reason behind this interest rate cut not working? The main reason can be that people are not willing to borrow. They are, they are in such pessimistic thoughts or they, they, are, they are showing such pessimistic attitude because of uncertainty or because of the bad times that they have faced. They are thinking, let's not consume too much. Let us just consume to our basic needs and let us try to save all the money or just try to stack it in cash form in their homes or in banks rather than putting them in any kind of investment. So by investments, I mean high risk, high reward investments like equity. And I also mean fixed income securities, right? So people do not want their money to get locked in such securities. Uh, doesn't matter to them if it is, it is considered to be a safe investment, but they want to have cash in emergency. That is why they, they do not try to put it in any investment, right? And since they are not putting it out in the economy, the circle is not moving or the circulation is not going on, right? So the movement of money from one hand to another is not taking place, which is dragging the economy backwards, right? So government, uh, central bank trying to increase borrowing by cutting the rates, by reducing the cost of borrowing, interest rates nearing zero, but economy still remains flat, right? See, you can see how bank is trying to push the loan, but the borrower is not willing to buy, right? So this is a liquidity trap scenario. 
So I think we have discussed most of the things here. Interest rates at extremely low levels. Individuals, they prefer to hoard cash or in cash equivalent form, right? Rather than putting them in investments. After that, country is trying to recover from a recession. So this situation, this liquidity trap, it usually takes place when there, when there has recently been an uh, been a recession in the economy right so most of the countries so there recently there was a statement by economist Gita Gopinath that how liquidity trap is approaching for countries right so this is the situation of liquidity trap so many of you mentioned it in the comments I hope this helps you so see you can see all the points here central banks all over the world they have cut down the rates to nearly zero as well right uh, as well so, but still economies are not recovering at fast pace, at least some of them are not, right? And after that, uh, COVID-19, it has led to a recession in most of the countries. So, obviously, we are following a recession or we are trying to pump up the economies after recession. So, uh, a liquidity trap usually occurs after a recession when the economy is trying to recover from it. Government tries to boost investment in the nation by reducing interest rates. So, extremely low uh, interest rates. Concept was developed by John Maynard Keynes and Hicks in 1937 as an economic condition first observe after Great Depression. Because Great Depression was also a time period when the prices were, uh, there, there, there was a long uh, time period of recession and it extended to such long time that we call it a depression, right? So, uh, they observed this phenomena of liquidity trap that the interest rates were cut down but they were not showing the impact because of such saving tendencies that have developed, that, that had developed in the public, right? So, how to, now how to control it? How, how can a country which is facing liquidity trap, it can recover from it? So, first point is expansionary fiscal policy coupled with lower taxes so a simple simple mean a simple method is to put money into hands of people just give them money and ask them to spend it on anything or ask them to spend on goods and services so that it moves in the economy it changes hand right so uh, uh, um, recently uh, i was looking at a hindi newspaper and it was carrying a quote about upcoming festive season Diwali that if you celebrate Diwali, then you will celebrate any other Diwali celebrate ho which, which simply means that if you celebrate festivals, then only others are going to be able to celebrate the festivals. Because if you celebrate them, if you buy things, if you buy goods and services, then others will earn and they will be able to celebrate festivals. Right? So, uh, this tells you how spending is very important in such a situation. Right? After that, Massive reduction in price level can also boost the spending. So, trying to reduce the prices so that it boosts up spending in the market. Right? Also, lowering taxes because it puts money into the hands of people. So, I hope liquidity trap is uh, clear to you. Moving ahead to the next question. Okay, this is second question which says, SEBI has recently extended its one-time settlement scheme. Right? Under this scheme, under this scheme, Entities which executed dash on the stock option segment of the BSC during 1st April 2014 to 30 September 2015 period and against whom any proceedings or pendings are eligible to avail the settlement opportunity. Okay, this, this seems like a really tricky statement, but uh, don't worry, we are going to uh, disintegrate it into smaller parts and then understand it. Okay, moving ahead to the solution and the solution for this question is option D which means reversal trade or known as reverse trade or trade reversal, right? So now let's talk about the, so uh, uh, SEBI has recently extended a scheme which it came up in, came up with in July which is known as one time settlement scheme. So one time settlement scheme now what is in there what is there in this scheme that sebi is saying simply that between this time period 2014 to 2015 1st april 2014 to 30 september 2015 those 
entities who carried out or who executed reversal trade in this period they were charged with some cases and now we are providing you with an option that you can get out of these cases and provide us with one time compensation and then we'll let you off the hook and the cases against you will be closed right so this is the scheme now the point here is what is the meaning of reversal trade and why are these entities who enter into such trades they they are being uh, punished for that or there are cases against them for this so now talking about reversal trade see a reversal trade is a trade which which is not a genuine trade or by name you can see it includes the word reversal or reverse so it is basically a trade that if there is a trader let's say there is a person a this person a buys some shares in the market and in the next day or a very within a very short period of time for the same amount he sells the shares he sells the same quantity of shares right so basically he reverses his his position or let's say if he is shorting some shares if he is entered into a contract to sell these shares then again he buys the shares after few days so basically a trader if he or she enters into an opposite position or a reverse position within a very short period of time then it is known as reversal trade so this reversal trade such trades are carried on by many entities so that they can show certain amount of loss uh, in their taxable income or uh, if they want to Uh, if they want to convert some of their black money into white money or if they want to put some of their black money which is not uh, in the which is not uh, being taxed or on which he or she is not paying tax to put that money into circulation such bogus trades are entered right so let's say there are two people x and y x has got some amount so x has got some amount of 10 lakh which is unaccounted for so basically this is the black money which x has now why why wants to show some loss in his income statement so that the taxable income is reduced now the broker between them let's say there is a broker between them mr z who is a friendly broker he would somehow carry out a trade between both of them which will end up with x earning an amount of 10 lakh and y having a loss of 10 lakh right so x earning an amount of 10 lakh and y having a loss of 10 lakh so they are so some sort of trade between them will be manipulated like that so that they can fulfill their objectives right so x is money is converted into the uh, into white money or this money which was not accounted for now this money is with x as the profit he has earned from this trade and why he would be engaging into some loss without actually suffering from some loss which he can which he or she can show in the accounts and get a tax reduction right so basically this sort of trades which broker which many brokers carry out to fulfill certain objectives of their clients such trades they are not valid because obviously they are being done with the purpose of tax evasion or so basically tax evasion because y wants to reduce the tax burden whereas x wants x does not want to pay on some money that he has on some on the black money he has right so tax evasion is the major purpose here that is why these reversal trades uh, they are getting punished now sebi so the trades which were carried out between this time period sebi is saying that you come to us and let's say if you had to pay a compensation of rupees 100 you can pay a 0.55 compensation which means you can actually pay 55 rupees and we are going to let you go we we are going to close the case basically pay us this amount 55 rupees in return for 100 and we are going to let you of the hook so it reduces the burden 
on regulators for handling so many cases and obviously for those people who, who uh, whose compensation uh, who have to pay a lesser compensation because if they do not avail the scheme and the case carries on they might have to pay a higher compensation when it ends or when it gets closed right so they can carry on and they can get this case closed so this is the one time settlement scheme which has been recently extended by sebi here you can see view of large scale disruption scheme has been extended till 31st december it was supposed to be between it was announced by regulator in july commenced on 1st august 2020 and it was supposed to end on 31st october 2020 so uniform consolidated settlement factor of 0.55 that whatever compensation you have to pay pay us 55% of it in all cases wherein entities had executed reversal trade would be applicable while arriving at indicative settlement amount so the settlement amount which they have to pay so to arrive at this factor or to arrive at this amount sebi has considered some parameters here which are artificial volume number of non genuine trades and number of contracts resulting in creation of artificial volume or non genuine trade basically looking at how much trade has been carried out or Uh, how many money how much money has been uh, circulated through this route uh, sebi has tried to find this para this particular factor by applying these parameters that how much artificial volume has been created in market due to such trades because obviously they give an impression of some activity which is going on in the market but actually the purpose is not to trade but to carry out some other purposes of tax evasion right noted that trading of these entities appeared abnormal because they were consistently seen to be making significant losses by their trade which were reversed by the same counter parties either on the same day or the next day right so one part some parties they were seen to be making some losses which were appearing abnormal in the context of market right so i hope the scheme is clear to you moving ahead to the next question Okay here is the third question for today it says what does it refer to two statements given to you you have to find the correct option moving ahead to the solution the solution is option e d so d means ref okay there is a correction the correct option is not d that must have been a typing mistake the correct option is e e means reflation right so reflation now talking about this term called reflation so it is in simple terms it is opposite of deflation when an economy is going through a deflationary phase or it is it is witnessing that there is there is a loss of economic activity and businesses are going down people are not buying there is no demand and economy is going down in that situation government takes up the uh, takes up the job of pumping the economy or boosting the economy pumping it with liquidity and this process is called <coughs> sorry reflation as you can see here it is a policy that is enacted after a period of economic slowdown or contraction so you can relate to it because obviously when there is recession and there is deflation then there comes a need to reflate the economy so do not confuse it with inflation because inflation means a general rise in price of goods and services right so inflation is not being done purposely but it happens due to the normal factors of the market but reflation it is being it is being deliberately done by the regulators and the governments so that they can kick start the economy aims to stop the general decline which is deflation it aims to stop deflating prices right moving ahead to the information about reflation i think that's a very simple term fiscal or monetary policy designed to expand output stimulate spending and curb the effects of deflation deflation usually occurs after a period of economic uncertainty or 
recession. So it's a long term shift obviously because government wants to make some long term changes to the economy and it is characterized by re-acceleration for which government takes many steps like uh, doing capital expenditure right or trying to lower taxes basically to impart or to infuse liquidity into market prosperity that strives to redu reduce any excess capacity in the labor market so and the tools to do to carry out reflation are first of all lower taxes government aims to lower taxes after that lowering interest rates to reduce the cost of borrowing which makes it cheaper to borrow and stimulates the economy by stimulating the lending and borrowing activity after that when central banks boost the amount of currency and other liquid instruments so basically they are trying to buy bonds and uh, trying to infuse liquidity in the market to so, or put money into the market it also leads to reflation or it is a step to reflate the economy after that large investment projects because when government carries out such large uh, investment projects or they they carry out capital expenditure they lead to generation of employment which automatically puts money into hands of people so i think we have discussed the, these things many a times in our session so this is reflation moving ahead to the next question so here is the question which says mr hira nandani is a rice mill owner his brother in law mr kedia works at a high position in finance ministry now hira nandani's business was accused of tax evasion recently but due to his close connection with kedia there were no strict actions taken against him which of the following options is most suitable to describe this type of system so five options given to you moving ahead to solution the solution says that the correct option is c c means crony capitalism so you must have heard this term many times in newspapers and uh, economic finance or finance magazines crony capitalism so crony capitalism is simply when there is government on one hand and there are businesses or you can say capitalists on the other hand and they are connected to each other basically government is working or some parts of government is working to benefit the capitalists and not in a very positive manner but in a negative manner uh, not punishing them where they should be or allowing them to evade taxes basically providing them with some undue advantages that is known as crony capitalism when there is a nexus between government and business people right so you what is meant by capitalism capitalism is an economic structure in which private sector takes the lead and businesses are boosted and uh, profits are given much importance profit making is one major um act, major objective to carry out economic activities but when this capitalism system it involves a connection with government to avail some undue advantages it is known as crony capitalism see why it, it might seem like a small thing or or a usual thing but crony capitalism is very important because it has been the root cause of many crises in many countries right so uh during the asian financial crisis crony capitalism was cited as one reason for many countries fall right so there were other factors also which were at play but yes this was all, this is also one of the reason that why a country is pulled backwards or why benefits that the government wants to send to the downtrodden section they do not reach them because there are capitalists to take advantage of that or basically they are indulging into rent seeking behavior trying to have what is not theirs right we have discussed rent seeking behavior in detail in previous sessions okay i hope you understand the concept here moving here crony capitalism capitalist society in which success of businessmen depends upon the nexus basically your success is the business success is depending upon the connections with government rather than their own acumen or their own 
capabilities, right? So rather than a free market or rule of law. Success of business is dependent upon favoritism. So the businessmen who are having the hand of government on their heads, they profit whereas the other ones are not able to flourish. Shown by government in the form of government grants, tax benefits, allocation of legal permits, right? So if I think uh, if you have watched the movie Guru, you can relate to this part allocation of legal permits, right? Prefix tenders, pro-businessmen policies and other favorable incentives. See, we are not saying that it is bad to uh, push business activity. It is obviously very important because capitalists and bus because businessmen, they are the backbone of every economic society, right? So we need them to develop, but we need them to be in control as well, to follow the rules and to follow the laws of country as well, right? So they cannot be allowed to violate them, right? So crony capitalism, dominant form of capitalism because incentives provided by government and these incentives include fostering rent-seeking behavior, limiting competition, creating barriers to entry and obtaining subsidies, right? Moving ahead to the last question. Here is your last question for today, which says Dash involves taking trades that last a couple of days up to several months in order to profit from an anticipated price move. Moving ahead to the solution and the solution is option A, which is swing trading. See, now swing trading. Swing trading, as you can understand from its name, just, just as a swing, it takes advantage, just as a swing takes the advantage of movement or uh, gives the uh, user the utility gives the user the pleasure of movement. Similarly, swing trading also allows the trader to make money from the movements of securities or movements of instruments in the market, right? Movements of price of instruments in the market, right? So let us try to understand it in detail. It is a style of trading that attempts to capture short to medium term gains in stock market or any financial instrument over a period of few days to several weeks, right? Basically buying something now or selling it in coming days, not a very long time, not, not, not keeping it for years, but for, for a time period ranging from few days to several weeks, basically being an active trader is what is taking the, the benefit of swing trading, right? So buying something now and selling it when the price rises in the coming days, and or selling something now and buying it back when the prices fall. But the time period between this buying and selling is not large. It is usually restricted to few days and several weeks, right? So this is known as swing trading. So a very simple method. After that, you can differentiate with day trading. So basically in day trading, what happens is they have the traders, they have to complete their position or square of their position within a day that is why it can be really hectic for them because they are trying to make profit within a very very short period whereas swing trading it has a longer time period than day trading but still not a very long time period right so okay exposes a trader to overnight and weekend risks where the prices could gap and open the following session at substantially different prices so basically risk in, there is overnight risk involved in day trading no overnight risk because they have to complete the position within a day pros of swing trading takes less time because obviously they do not have the compulsion to close the position or square the position square of the position in the day itself so requires less time man maximizes short term profit by capturing the bulk of market swings so trying to analyze the mood of market and then trying to benefit from it Traders can rely exclusively on technical analysis and simplifying the trading processes. See, whenever a trader takes a decision, he has he or she has to learn about market or analyze the movements in market. Then only they can decide whether they want to buy or they want to sell or they want to hold the asset. For this, they follow many types of analysis and technical analysis is one of them. There are others like fundamental analysis as well, right? 
so in technical analysis what happens is they try to uh, measure the movement of market and then try to predict that what is going to happen in future whereas in fundamental analysis what they do is they try to study the fundamentals of the company and then try to invest so technical in analysis is used by traders who try to make short term gain whereas fundamental analysis they are used by the uh, investors who want to invest for long term so technical analysis is used for day trading right cons trade positions are subject to risk obviously because there is a time period abrupt market reversals can result in substantial losses right if the expectations of the trader doesn't come true suffers from losses swing traders often miss longer term trends in favor of short term market moves right so to make a uh, quick gain or to make quick money sometimes they are not able to look at the brighter side look at the good parts of long term investing so guys these were the five questions for today i hope you learned something new from this video and if you did do not forget to hit the like button before you leave and before ending the session i would like to take one or two doubts okay there was a doubt that what is the difference between lobbing and whale trading right see a whale trading happens when whale trading happens when there is one big investor in the market who's trying to manipulate the prices whereas lobbying in simple terms lobbying in simple terms it means to influence someone else to do the job that you want to do right so lobbying is a general term or you can say it's a broader term whereas whale trading is concerned with moving the prices in stock market okay there was one article that you guys asked me to discuss and it was it was about rbi governor okay the article is called why rbi governor is playing mr bond so a very interesting article i think we have discussed some aspects of this article in which we have talked about how there was a conflict between rbi who was trying to issue bonds and the buyers the potential buyers who were bidding for these bonds because rbi did not want to provide these bonds at a very high yield because they do not want to raise the cost of borrowing whereas the uh, the bidders they wanted to compensate for the upcoming inflation they were sensing that experts are saying that inflation is going to rise and obviously if inflation is going to rise then they need more compensation for providing their money to government or allow government to borrow their money right so rbi was not agreeing to this term that is why there was a conflict and then most of the bonds they have to, they had to be bought by the underwriters so that is why uh, this article tells you that why rbi is playing a strong face and why it is not letting the yields rise because of the simple because of the simple reason that they do not see these yields that are provided on these government bonds they they are like a deciding factor for almost all lending borrowing or uh, uh, agreements in the market right because somehow in one way or the another most of the interest rates on um, these in, in these lending borrowing agreements are dependent upon these yields that government is going to provide so if is, if government is willing to provide a higher yield cost of borrowing rises for uh, for almost all borrowers in the economy that is why they are trying to keep it low so that they can keep the cost of borrowing at low levels and people borrow they borrow they avail money they spend it and stimulate the economy right and okay this basically this is what to summar, uh, summarize and this also shows you the side of bidders that why bidders are not want, bidders are not willing to buy the bonds at lower yields because they want compensation for the rising inflation right so rbi is thinking that okay we will will try to uh, in, will will try to engage into inflation targeting will try to keep it at lower levels in the upcoming times but obviously the person the person who is bidding for buying the bond is going to be skeptic of it and would want a higher compensation right so but rbi is expecting them to cooperate so that they can stimulate the economy and then after that they can take care of the approaching inflation right so this 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 is basically what the article talks about in gist and i hope you found it beneficial so guys i'll see you in the next session till then you take care of yourself and keep your studies going on and thank you for being here